Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here. I know you're working uh, to address the supply chain challenges that are confronting our nation following the pandemic. Uh, a lot of those as impacted by uh, aging or limited infrastructure, uh, our highways, our, inf our interstate highway system in particular, uh, needs upgrading, updating. I represent the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, uh, Virginia 6, which stretches from the Roanoke Valley up to Shenandoah Valley and has Interstate 81, which runs along it. Uh, I-81 runs from I-40 uh, down in Tennessee to the Canadian border in upstate New York, as you know. But it is the, uh, the economic backbone of Western Virginia, and it runs over 300 miles uh, in both Virginia 6 and Virginia 9 and Southwest Virginia. It, it is not just a transportation corridor for goods and services from uh, points south, Mexico, and otherwise to points north, New York, or, um, and, and New England, but it's also a, a major corridor for uh, local farmers, for families, for small businesses. Um, it really is truly, truly the backbone of the, of the valley. Um, for many years, we have all agreed on both sides of the aisle, uh, along with uh, my colleague from Northern Virginia, uh, Deli uh, Congresswoman Wexton, and, and also Senator Warner and Kane, that uh, I-81 does need a third lane and uh, it was built originally for 15% trucking capacity, but often operates with 30, maybe upwards of 50, depending on the time of day, trucking capacity uh, or percentage of trucks. Um, it's the most dangerous highway in Virginia with over 2,000 crashes and millions of hours of delays yearly. So uh, the Commonwealth has adopted a corridor improvement plan. But the timeline is challenging. And so I, I would just ask that as uh, you consider uh, resources and allocating those resources nationally to address uh, the supply chain issues, congestion issues, uh, that you look at the bottleneck that's being created by uh, I-81 in the Valley only being two lanes, and hopefully there are opportunities within the department uh, to make the interstate safer and run more efficiently. Well, thank you. I'm uh, uh, aware of uh, this corridor improvement plan. I believe uh, there are 64 different projects that are, are, are encompassed within it and know that that's going to be a, a big lift. Uh, I'm aware that uh, the, the state has put forward a lot of resources and uh, we're glad that the increased formula dollars that come with the uh, infrastructure law are, uh, are part of the mix of funding available for that. Uh, but certainly would also note that there are a number of discretionary programs that we have that might also uh, come into play for uh, many of the projects that are part of that broader vision and uh, uh, certainly a, a, an area that we're very much aware of as we're doing our work. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> to also ask about the livestock industry, which is important in the Valley. Uh, the livestock industry has been exempted from uh, the ELD mandate, electronic logging devices, uh, for the last five years. Meanwhile, statistics uh, through the trucking industry as a whole show that ELDs have, in fact, reduced safety on the roads as drivers are speeding to beat the clock. Uh, how do you respond to the fact that the ELD implementation uh, may have led to less safe roadways in some areas? Well, the idea of ELDs is to make sure that drivers do not uh, drive longer than they safely can, leading to fatigue, which we know is a major cause of, uh, of crashes. Uh, certainly, if uh, there is an attempt to uh, defeat or work around that, uh, that could lead to an unsafe condition. Uh, I don't believe the solution is to abandon our, our work to uh, reduce fatigue. But I do believe that, that there are a number of steps that we can take that are part of a broader safe systems approach that will make a difference uh, in conjunction with the work we do around hours of service. And just one example that I would mention is uh, the availability of truck parking. We know one thing that creates a lot of pressure on drivers is as they get close to timing out on their hours of service, uh, they're not sure if there's going to be a safe, uh, let alone convenient place to park between uh, uh, between now and then. It's one of the reasons why we are encouraging states to use eligible formula dollars to fund truck parking and using some of our own discretionary dollars, most recently in uh, projects in Florida and in Tennessee, to directly construct more truck parking because uh, that shortage is real and an issue we hear a lot about. If we have uh, any left drivers. over after that third lane gets constructed, we'll put some more parking <laughs> on there too. <laughs> Maybe they could go together. Um, one more question. Mm. Uh, tw truckers and independent owners, operators from my district have expressed concern uh, with the FMCSA's proposed rule for heavy vehicle speed limiters. Time and again, um, data suggests that it's a, it's a complicated factor about the causation of, of truck passenger accidents. 
uh, not to mention that the rule could be particularly harmful to small business owners. Uh, does DOT think implementing this rule will be specifically harmful to independent owner operators? And how did DOT decide on the suggested 60 mile per hour maximum? I would, well, uh, I'd ask you, Mr. Secretary, to be short. You're kind of violating sorry, my rule there, okay. I, He didn't, uh, didn't give the Secretary the time. Uh, uh, well, the short answer is uh, safety is our North Star. We'll be guided by the data, and we welcome stakeholder and in industry uh, uh, input as we're uh, working toward finalization of rules. Thank you.